Welcome back. I'm going to take you through a necromancer build focused purely on minions. This is a build that you can use to defeat high end game content just like this pit tier 100 with level 199 monsters that I'm completing in this video. Now I have high end gear in this run but this build is something you could also work through with some adjustments in lower level content as you build up to take on the highest level content once your gear has been maxed out. Now in this testing I have tempered and masterworked my gear and I do run a few different uniques as well which I'll take you through a bit later. In terms of skills, one slot will be taken up by your Ray Skeleton and another by your Golem skill. Although these are required to summon your minions, you also need to be actively using them in battle. For Ray Skeleton this will be used in two parts, the first being to trigger the Fuel by Death passive to buff you and your minions damage. The second part being for an extra damage buff but more important healing. The way the healing is done is by having the blood getters aspect which means now the skeleton priest that is summoned also empowers you at 70% effectiveness, meaning you get the damage and healing buff from the skeleton priest. Now for the healing we are also pairing this with the unique pants temerity which means effects that heal you beyond 100% life now grant a barrier up to 80% of your maximum life that lasts for 8 seconds. This helps a lot with our survivability as now whenever we raise the Skeleton Priest and it heals us above max health, we'll be getting a barrier which means you can pretty well keep this up most of the time. Now for the Golem you'll be using the active skill to deal out some extra damage and be able to direct your Golem as well. It can also be used to make you unstoppable to help you escape CC. Then you'll be using Corpse Tendrils for the buff it applies by applying Vulnerable and the Critical Strike chance and damage gained from the Aspect Grasping Veins. This also helps group up enemies together and helps you stun them in place. Once you pair this with the tempering effect to increase corp tendril size, it will increase the skill size a lot which will pull in most enemies on the screen. In terms of the ultimate skill, I'm running Army of the Dead to further boost our minion's power by pairing it with the unyielding commander's aspect which will buff our minion damage by 100%. Next we're using the cursed decrepifier which is used to help slow enemies and help us with some damage reduction. The modifiers will also mean we have a chance to stun enemies and also help with our cooldowns being reduced. As well as the core skill Blight, which I'm primarily using for the bonus 20% damage it will give me and my minions when enemies are within Blight. I'm also pairing this with the Ebon Piercer Amulet. The reason for this is to help with some damage reduction. You can get 19.5% damage reduction from enemies impacted by shadow damage over time, which will be applied by my Blight. It also means Blight fires four other smaller projectiles that pierce enemies. So this means you can easily apply shadow damage over time to a lot of enemies to get the full impact of that damage reduction. Now for the Book of the Dead, we'll be taking the Reapers so they can help generate corpses. For the Mages, we're taking Shadow Mages and the increased damage for each Shadow Mage you have. For the Golem, I've taken the Blood Golem that can take 30% of the damage we would take further helping with our survivability which is needed at these higher levels. Now in terms of using all these skills together I will usually hit the enemies with the decrepifier so they're cursed which gives me all the modifiers from that skill as well as increased damage to cursed enemies. Then send my golem in with his active ability and once there is a corpse cast corpse tendrils to pull them in while remembering to fire off blight to help with the damage and damage reduction. Then just make sure to use Army of the Dead with your larger elite groups to wipe them out. Decrepify is going to help by reducing the cooldowns on your skills to help keep up the rotation as much as possible. And don't forget to keep summoning the Skeleton Priest to heal you and your minions and buff your damage. Now I'm going to take you through all the aspects I'm using and some general things to look for on your gear. For my helm I have Blood Getter's aspect on. And for tempering, I would try and make sure you have an increase of size for Decrepify or Corpse Tendrils, which are the two skills you're using. For the other temper, I have Total Armor to help me get the armor cap, which for level 199 monsters, you'll want to make sure you have at least hit 16,400. For my chest, I have the Heart and Bones aspect, which can give you and your minions 25% damage reduction. And once again, go for a size increase for Decrepify or Corpse Tendrils for the temper. For my gloves, I have the Forensic Dead aspect for the increased attack speed up to 45%, which is a key to this build as we want a good attack speed for our minions. For temper, go for a damage source from minions and then increase the size of either Corpse Tendrils or Decrepify. 
for your pants. I have the unique temerity on to help with the barriers I get with the interaction with the blood getters aspect as discussed earlier. For my boots, I have the occult dominion aspect for the increased minions you get. Then just make sure you have a movement speed buff from the temporary and ideally another size increase to one of the skills you're using. Sadly, I got stuck with Iron Maiden on the ones I was using. For my weapon, I'm using Unyielding Commander's Aspect for the increased minion damage when it's paired with Army of the Dead. For the Tempering, I would suggest an attack speed buff and then one of the minion damage increases. As discussed earlier, for the Amulet, I'm using the Ebon Piercer to help with my damage reduction. For my first ring, I have the Ring of Mandalin. This is going to help in a few ways. One, with a bit of extra damage but it also has a good buff to minion attack speed and max minion life, which is a bit harder to get. For my second ring, I have a grasping veins aspect on it to help by increasing critical strike chance and critical strike damage to enemies impacted by corpse tendrils, which with the size increase will basically be everyone. Finally, I have a focus on for the cooldown reduction, and I have the aspect of reanimation on for the increased minion damage of up to 40%. For the tempers, I took an attack speed buff and summoning damage, which will impact all my minions. Now, for my Paragon board, I'm not going to go through it fully, but I will quickly list the boards and glyphs I'm using. But don't worry, I have linked the full build in the description, so you can use that to go into the full detail of the Paragon board. For boards, I have six the starter board, Cult Leader, Scent of Death, Hulking Mistocity, Wither, and Flesh Eater. In terms of glyphs, I'm using Warrior, Dead Razor, Golem, Mage, Darkness, and Control. Now that's it for the full build guide. I would appreciate if you found this video useful, you give it a like, and remember to subscribe to my channel for further guides going into Season 4. And don't forget to leave a comment if you have any other minion builds you're planning to use in Season 4.